Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, in the shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inshallah, we continue with Surah Al-A'la. This is a very famous surah. We all hear it a lot in um, Salat al-Jum'ah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite it in Salat al-Jum'ah, in the first raka'ah, and then the second raka'ah, he would recite Surah Al-Ghashiyah. And the same thing for Salat al-Eid. And he also used to recite it in Salat al-Witr. <clears throat> So a lot of us are familiar with the surah. It starts with Sabbihisma Rabbika al-A'la. So this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's telling us, the Muslims, that we need to glorify the name of our Lord. Glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High. And when this verse was revealed, Allah, uh, the Prophet wasallam told the companions that in your sujood, you should say this, Subhana Rabbiya al-A'la. So when Allah says, Sabbih isma rabbika al-A'la, the tasbih is basically glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make sure that in our heart and in our mind, we keep any imperfection away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unlike other religions, we know that in other religions, they ascribe imperfections to Allah, like those who claim that God had a son, God had a wife, God uh, had to sleep, God regretted creating man, God got, got tired after creating the universe. So these are all imperfections ascribed to Allah by followers of other religions. But in Islam, this is very important if you want to be a Muslim. You cannot actually be a Muslim without glorifying Allah from any imperfections. So here, this is a command from Allah to every Muslim to glorify Him above all kinds of imperfection. And the Most High, we already know and we believe, according to uh, the aqidah of the Muslims, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Most High. And we are, we say that when we are in the lowest position to show humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe that Allah is above the throne and there is nothing above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladhi khalaqa no, this Allah is describing Himself. He's still in us. He is our Lord. He's the Most High. He is far above any imperfection. And He is the one who created everything. Not just did He create everything, but He also gave everything its proportion. Like created in a certain um, in a certain place and in a certain time with certain characteristics that will make the life easy and um, in a perfect manner for this creation. So the humans, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them something that he did not give to any other um, creation, which is the ability to reason, the ability to think, the ability to choose, the ability to have this morality. Um, unlike other creation like animals, for example, they do not have any of this. And because they do not have this, they're not held accountable in the same way we are held accountable. And also because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them limited mind, gave them limited intellect, he also gave them the resources that will allow them to live life on this earth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, qaddara fahada. So not only did he create and give everything its you know, uh, perfect proportion or perfect fashion in order to live uh, a life, uh, and on this earth, but also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qadr, the rizq or the sustenance for every one of us and for the animals, just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way, Allah will give you sustenance in the same way that he gave the birds. They leave their nests with an empty stomach and they come back with a full Billy. And then he says, qaddara fahada. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala written for every one of us a certain rizq, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us to the rizq. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for, for me, for example, to be an imam or something like that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paved the way for me to become an imam. The same thing applies to every one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for you to be a teacher. So he paved, paved the way for you to be a teacher, paved the way for you to be a doctor, etc. Um, and then also, the, some of the Mufassun, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means by this verse, qaddara fahada, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ability to choose. He gave us two ways, the way of righteousness and the way of evil. And it is up to us to choose one of these two ways, like he said in another verse, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paved for us the two ways, the way of good and the way of evil. And it's up to us to choose because he gave us the free will. And since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wrote for us a certain kind of sustenance, he then tells us it is he who akhraj al-mara. الذي أخرج المرأة. He's the one that brings the plants out from the earth. Plants, fruits, everything that we need from the earth. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give the earth the ability to produce its fruits, its vegetables, all the crops that we need in order to survive. And not just for us to survive, but also the animals that live around us. والذي أخرج المرأة. And then Allah says, فَجَعَلَهُ غُثَاءً أَحْوَى this mara, these beautiful plants that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought, brought forth from the earth, then very soon, the fa here tells us that this happens fast, فَجَعَلَ غُثَاءً أَحْوَى It immediately later becomes غُثَاءً أَحْوَى Dry and black and useless for us. And this is a reminder of the, um, the, the fact that this life is so short. The fact that the pleasures on this life are very very short it because it, it, it was green and beautiful and then a few days later it becomes dry and dead so this is a reminder for you and i my dear brothers and sisters that nothing is lasting on this earth and uh, on this earth and subhanallah if you look at this verse down here allah says Bel al despite it being so short and the pleasures in it are very, very short. Still, you would choose the worldly life over the hereafter. While al-akhiratu khayr wa abqa, the hereafter is everlasting and will never disappear on you. Will never die. You will never have anything that will, you know, disappear from you or something like that. So here, Allah is giving us a reference or a reminder of how temporary life is and the pleasures on this planet are and then Allah says so now that you know that life is very temporary and the pleasures on it are very temporary no you need to read you need to read this Quran you need to understand this Quran and follow the guidance of this Quran so Allah is telling the Prophet وسلم, now that you're ready for the message now that you know that this life is very temporal now you need to read this Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, do not worry. He's saying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will make sure that you do not forget it. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever Jibreel would recite some verses, new verses come to him with revelation, the Prophet hears from Jibreel, and before Jibreel finishes the verse, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa starts from the beginning, trying to remember. So he was in this hasty, you know, uh, worried situation where he's worried that he's going to forget some of the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, do not worry. It is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you remember the Qur'an. Inna alayna jama'ahu wa Qur'ana. And then Allah says, إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ Allah." So Allah will make sure that when you read the Qur'an, when you receive the revelation from Jibreel, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not make you forget it. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ Allah. Except if Allah wills for you to forget. And then the end of the verse tells us why. Why Allah would will for him to forget some of the revelation. Okay, Allah says, إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَ Allah knows whatever is hidden and whatever is apparent, whatever is uh, is in public and whatever is in secret. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling him that he will not forget except for some things that Allah wants for him to forget. And the scholars say that this refers to the ayat that were mansukh, that were abrogated. Like the verses about the, the alcohol. In the beginning, Allah talks about the alcohol without, without mentioning that it has any harm or anything. And then Allah tells the Muslims, do not approach the prayer when you are intoxicated, when you have intoxication. But it's not haram yet. And then eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, uh, another verse Allah says that فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافَةٌ In them there is benefit and there is harm. And then eventually Allah says, it is from the evil of shaitan, so stay away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is reminding the Prophet that there will always be benefit in Allah making him forget 
some of the verses that he revealed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will abrogate them for the benefit of the Prophet and for the benefit of the Ummah as well. And then Allah says, That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you this legislation that will be easy, right? The, the religion of Islam is an easy religion. Some legislations in the past, they had really difficult uh, laws that they had to follow. But for us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very easy because it's a religion for all of mankind to the end of days. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he, whenever he had to choose between two things, he would always choose what is easier for his ummah. And the same thing should apply to, you know, um, scholars. Like, if you notice, like, scholars who are really knowledgeable, they usually try to choose opinions that are beneficial for the ummah. And not based on their hawa or their desire or anything like that, but based on evidence, of course, and based on research. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعْتِ الذِّكَى So now that you have this revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not make you forget, except for things that are beneficial for you, and that revelation is also easy for you and for humanity, Allah then is telling him to deliver that message. Now, ذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى And telling us as well, remind if there is benefit of that reminder. Okay? So if you're talking to someone and you know they will benefit from the reminder, then go ahead and do the reminder. And make sure that you're choosing the right time, the right place, and the right verses, because the Ali ibn Abi Talib, for example, said, do not talk to people about something that their brains cannot reach, their brains cannot fathom or understand. هَلْ تُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُكَذَّبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ Because if you do so, people are going to deny the message, are going to reject Islam, are going to say that the Prophet ﷺ is a liar. So know when and how and who and the place, right? When you are delivering a reminder, when you are giving an advice. This is very important, giving advice. We could talk hours about it. And then the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, The kinds of people who will accept that reminder, who will accept that rem advice from you are those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who do not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are destined to be punished are the ones who are going to avoid this reminder and push you away when you're trying to remind them or give them advice. We'll stop here inshallah and we'll continue next time. قولوا قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم والسلام عليكم